Blast Inhibitor 1, 2 and 2, and it's list day! Uh, with the end of 2018 and the beginning of 2019, we have gotten through one more year of Yu-Gi-Oh! And 2018 was actually a pretty interesting year for Yu-Gi-Oh! We got uh, a hell of a lot of sets with, uh, not a ton of changes to the meta. Seems like the sets this year were kind of lackluster. Besides Dark Saviors, everything else that kind of came out was mostly full of either a tech choice card or pack filler. So it's uh, there was a lot of mediocre cards to sift through for today's list, the top 10 worst cards of 2018. I wanted to start with the bad ones because I figured it'd be more work because the good ones should be pretty obvious. So we'll do that one second. And I'm not gonna do a huge intro this time because you guys just want me to sit here and complain about bad cards. So let's go number 10. Link Devotee is number 10. This Link 1 Earth Cybers monster can be made with one level 4 or lower Cybers monster. Woot! With a upward facing arrow, uh, that's a bit awkward. You really want him to be facing down, but if M Duck can face up and still be part of Wombo Combos, What's wrong with Link Devotee? If this card was special summoned, not just Link, for the rest of the turn you can't make Link 3 or higher monsters. <sighs> Why? This is a low Link level monster, which would imply that it is supposed to be for Link climbing, especially because its arrow points up, which isn't helping you very much making extra link plays. So you're gonna have to be making your extra link board with nothing but link two or lowers, which is doable, I suppose, but um, that's, a, that's a very strange restriction. And it's probably because its effect is actually not so bad. If this card is tributed, you can summon two Link tokens to the field. They're level one normals. Light, Cyber, zero, zero. You can only use Link Devotee's effect once per turn. Poor turn. Yes, this is probably why it's preventing you from going to Link 3 and 4 is because it's a free plus one maneuver to summon two tokens if the thing is tributed. Now, I'm not sure how Link, uh, not Link, Cyber's monsters work. Uh, I'm assuming they have some sort of in-theme way of tributing this thing. Otherwise, it's activated condition's a little awkward, but we're gonna go under the assumption that they have some means of doing it that's not Link Karibo because he doesn't work on Link monsters, and that you'd actually be able to get these two Link tokens in order to continue your board. It's a darn shame that you can't make Link 3 or Hires, however, uh, you could extra link with nothing but Link 2s if you have Proxy Dragon, Two Nightmares, Link Karibo, and, uh, Link Spider! I did it! So presumably there might be still a way to do it, even though that board isn't gonna be super strong. So. Okay, fine, cool. It's certainly not the best thing in the world. Number nine is Trading Places. <laughs> uh, like I said, there was a lot of really weird and bad obscure cards this year, so a lot had to get knocked off the list in order to make room for the ones that were really bad. So if your favorite bad cards are on here, I uh, trust me, this was difficult enough to make it just 10. But anyway, what, is, what does this silly thing do? Trading Places is a quick play spell. Nice! That has the following effect. If your life points are higher than your opponent's life points, switch your life points! Uh, very, 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 very rarely would you ever want to be in an advantageous position with having more life points and then give your opponent all of those and suck up their lower life points. That's normally flying in the face of your win condition, which is to reduce your opponent's life points to zero. However, being a quick play spell card makes me think that maybe this would find a home in something like a Nurse Burn deck where you're trying to get that life equalizer to work, so you, if your trying guess went south because your opponent is only playing Link monsters, so you had to call Fusion and you got a bunch of life, which doesn't really help you win, so now you're gonna flip it and then try, I don't know. It seems like a lot of hooey in order to get life equalizer to work, and this basically, at best, is only relegating itself to being a card to help stop the bad case scenarios of your deck. And you don't really want to deck build assuming something is going wrong. Normally that's actually kind of clumsy deck building. Normally you want to assume your deck is working and if it doesn't figure out why, not try to put things in it to like, well, if my deck is bad, then I'll do this instead. No, that, that's, that's just clutterous and it'll be a dead card most of the time if your deck's actually winning. You don't want your own cards to be in the way of you winning if you're already winning by just being dead. So it's an awkward weirdo card and its uses is probably very niche. So it's just bad. 
Gabrielle the time Gab time Gab Gabri Gab Gabrielle Zena's sidekick the Time Lord. Time Lords are actually probably some of the best monsters that we have in this game to just normal summon into a big board and break it in some way with we uh, with what meta 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 ion meta meta ion meta ion I don't I don't know or Zaphion. Uh, Mataion bounces all the monsters on the field, Zafion spins all of the spell and traps your opponent's got. So, oh yeah, you can break some boards with these bad boys. As level 10 fairies, obviously they're going to be a little harder to summon, although they all have the same effect that if you don't control any monsters, you can normal summon them without tribute. So that's nifty. Uh, basically, it's a... Uh, that's all I'm going to do this turn. I'm going to blow a normal summon on it, but I get to send or uh, summon my big, dumb... 0 0 level 10 beater to the field for freezies. And they all also have the same thing where they can't be killed by card effects or battle. So you're going to be able to enter a battle phase with them most likely and attack because that's how they get their effects off. Because if they battle and you, you don't take any battle damage with battles involving them, but if they battle at the end of that battle phase, you get to do something. If it's Zafion, you bounce the spell and traps. If it's Metaon, you bounce all the monsters. And then they also have some other individual, but all we care about is the board wiping ability. What does Gabrielle do? Gabrielle spins every card your opponent controls as much as possible to the deck. Holy crap, this card's broke. And then for every card your opponent shuffled into the main deck, they draw a card. Ugh, it's terrible. Obviously the niche application of this terrible card would be that, oh, my opponent has extra linked me with nothing but extra deck monsters, so now I'm going to punch into that because they'll all go into the extra deck and they won't get to draw anything and it'll be a pure straight minus for them. However, you're probably better off having Matayan on your deck instead because he'll put them all back in the extra deck just the same and he'll also affect the monsters that are main deck monsters that happen to be on the field as well and your opponent won't get free draws because of them. Ah, see that's the problem there. They're digging through their deck and if you bounced like a, a deck that had nothing but main deck monsters on the board, you stuck them all in their deck and then they're gonna draw a bunch, you've already blew your normal summon this turn, you're probably not gonna have a very stellar main phase two after this, so your opponent now may have an empty board but you really have no means of utilizing that and pushing for game because they get a free turn after this and you just refreshed their hand so they may now have dug for a bunch of hand traps that are gonna try to make your main phase two even worse. So it's very rarely going to actually net you any pure advantage, and most of the time Zafian or Matayan probably would have been the better play. So he's not as awful as he is just kind of useless when compared to the other monsters in his own archetype. Vorticule... Vortic Why are these cards impossible? Vorticule gum... Vortic... Vertical Dum Dragon. Vor Vorticular Drumgan. Drumgan? Drumgan, that's a very forced pun. Is a Link 3 monster with the following effect. You can only be made by three Dark Dragon types. Oh, that's really specific. And if this card is special summoned, draw one card. Wow, it's not even Link Summon. Meaning if you, like, lunk lunked it, lunked it. Lunked it. <laughs> linked it away and, and summoned it back with Monster Reborn or Soul Charge, you get that draw again. That's really neat. If this effect resolves, you can't use any unused monster zones that this card points to. Its arrows are side to side and straight down, which are fantastic Link 3 arrows. They're, it's perfect for being in the middle of your wombo combo, going right in the middle of your board, or taking a spot up in the extra deck zone, pointing straight down. You've got tons of options for this, and uh, it's a darn shame that he carries that stipulation. Basically, if he hits the field and one of those arrows is pointing to an unused zone, that zone cannot be used for the rest of the turn, which means that if you're in the middle of your wombo combo, if he points to an unused zone, you are now stopping yourself dead in your tracks, and that's totally stupid. Obviously, if you play him in the middle zone and you already had two monsters here and here, you could keep going, presumably, by the language of the card, but now you're forcing yourself to go way out of your way and like a wombo combo with Link's monsters is already way easy to misplay. You gotta be very very mindful of where you're putting your monsters and now you're adding a second layer of depth to that whole strategy by like no now I'm not able to worry about where they are when they come out but also where they are when they come out what they're pointing to because if they're pointing to the wrong thing then I can't make any more plays and I'm stuck with this dumb dragon in attack mode with what does what he at even he has a thousand attack power <laughs> holy crap that's terrible <laughs> basically he just makes it a giant pain in the ass to use even though you get that free draw which is obviously there to help mitigate the loss of card advantage that it is to make a link three monster it's a darn shame too because 
he might have actually been pretty good otherwise. And obviously being very specific in what you can use to make him, uh, I'm not even sure we have a link to monster that meets this requirement. And it also says three, it's not two plus, it's three, meaning you have to make this with three monsters. That's, that's real, ugh. Next up is, uh, Fandora the Flying Fertress. I'm not being funny or making a meme. It's actually called a Fertress. Fertress. Now why, oh why, would I be putting a Duel Links relevant dex field spell on some of the worst cards in the game of the last year list? Well, probably because in the TCG, which is what we all assume I am talking about by default, uh, fur hires were never that great, and their field spell flies in the face of everything that deck is actually trying to do. But what does it do? During your main draw phase, you can give up your actual draw phase draw to search a fur hire monster, not spell or traps, only the monsters. And if you have five fur hire monsters on the field with different names, you, or more I guess, you can send this thing from the field to the graveyard to destroy all cards your opponent controls. And your opponent takes no damage for the rest of the turn. On the surface, this card actually sounds all right. It's a search card, so it's a rota for the deck, as well as a, uh, an in-theme dark hole and a, and a heavy storm. That's broken, so why is it bad? Well, number one, if your searcher goes next turn, that's, uh, that's not good, that's really slow. You don't want your, you want it like Diagram or Spiral Resort, where it hits the field, you, you activate its effect, and you get something. Even Kaiju's silly field spell can search the turn it's played as long as you've accrued some counters. So a good designed field, goodly, <laughs> well designed field spell should, if it's going to search, should either search upon play or search like as a destruction thing to, to, to ward off your opponent's destruction effects, like Cosmotown. So therefore, holy crap, this thing is very slow. It's not getting you to anything fast. Not only that, but it uses up your draw phase, so you're really kind of not actually getting any advantage this turn. You're just trading one card that you would have been a rando card for one that you almost definitely need, so it's not any real advantage. That's unless you consider by default every main phase or draw phase draw A plus one. I guess it is, but it's a little, you know what I mean? It's not extra advantage. It's not play the card, get a card. It's, it's you know what I mean? So, because you're not. Mm. I'm getting ahead of myself. But not only that, if you've managed to get five monsters on board of different names, which, let's be real, in any kind of deck, any worth its salt, having five individual monsters on board is already a task, because half the time there's not even five good monsters in your archetype that's even worth playing. It's like three, you play three copies of any two, and then the rest of the deck's another engine or something, because that's how archetypes are built. Every monster's bad except like three of them. So no, you've managed to get five different ones on board, which is already a pain in the butt. But with for hire, that's not so bad. They daisy chain and things like that. So let's just assume best case scenario, you're the best for hire player in the world, and you got five different for hire monsters on board. You can now nuke your opponent's board. Yes! And that's all you can do this turn. Yeah, your opponent takes no damage for the rest of the turn. You have five monsters on board. You probably could have OTK'd. You probably had game. You could have pushed through their one or two guys they had because you're in a supremely winning position. There's no way you made all that and they have any kind of board whatsoever. And you just shot yourself in the foot because now you can't swing for game. The whole point of the deck, it's an OTK strat. It's bad card design, and its name is stupid. It flies in the face of what you're trying to do. <laughs> Ooh, Center Frog. If you told me we were getting new frog support this year, I would have been so happy. I would have been like, yes, um, this is Happy Dave. I love frogs, it's one of my favorite decks. And we're getting a real level two water aqua frog monster with 100 attack and 2k defense that is a frog monster that is straight 100% a frog monster yes too bad it freaking stinks damn it center frog cannot be used as material for a fusion synchro xc or link monster summon <laughs> if you knew what his effect does the fusion synchro and link wouldn't be so bad that would be fine it's the xc that it really hurts because now you have a frog monster in your frog deck that you cannot make totally awesome with the entire point of your frog deck you can't make your boss monster with it yeah Ooh, stupid card but okay Fine, what else does it do? If it's normal, it flips some and it goes to defense mode. Oh, thank goodness, it can be put in defense mode because it's got 2k defense. 
Stretching for things here. Once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls and then give your opponent this monster by placing it into a zone adjacent to the monster you targeted. Then, same effect, if they control your opponent controls two of these stupid things, you can take control of everything that's sitting between, physically on the board, your two center frogs. A mass change of heart play permanently would be broke if it wasn't for this Kakamimi, absolutely ridiculous, never going to happen activation condition. Not only that, but you're giving your opponent two monsters. You're giving them free advantage. You don't have stupid that is that's a minus two play you lose a monster they gain a monster and only one card moved that's terrible card advantage and a poor swing of tempo and then it's only ever going to work once if you manage to do it because after that games two and three your opponent's just going to play monsters in zones if you're going like one two three four five they're going to play them in zones one and five for the rest of the duel so that you can't actually get anything in between these two they're going to play around it in like the most easiest way possible simply by placing monsters on the board they don't even have to do anything that's like you know, extra, like, oh, side in a side deck. No, it's just play the game with conscious idea of where you're putting your things. Like, that's such a stupid way to play around a card, and it totally works. This is so dumb. You might be able to get somebody game one with it. Like, you, you, you summon Doop Frog with Toad on their turn, you soak up a turn, and then on your turn, instead of going into Swap Frog to get extra graveyard set up, you go into one of these instead, and then you go into another one in your hand and summon it, and then, and then, boop it chip boop it chip and then, Maybe. Uh, uh. Yeah, it would get you all the all the meme cred at locals, but it'll never work. But it would be funny as hell. I'll give it that. Who? I get to rip on a blue eyes card. Rampage with the eyes of blue. Uh, if you're a blue eyes player, I would just like you to really soak in the strangeness of the naming convention of this card. Like. Eyes of Blue is like nothing but a bunch of low level, like level one tuner monsters. And oh yeah, oh, and this one spell. <laughs> That's, I, don't, I don't know why. Is it searchable with the field spell? I don't know, maybe. I Actually, I don't think so. Whatever, it's terrible. Keep going. It is a quick play spell card. <sighs> it's really bad when you see a bad quick play spell because quick play spell is like setting it up for, for success. Like. How could it be bad if you can use it like a trap and a spell? That's so, so versatile. Banish this card, all cards you control as much as possible, all cards in your hand, and all cards in your graveyard face down. Oh god. If it doesn't say win the duel, this card is terrible. Summon three blue eyes white dragons from your deck. This card is terrible. Literally. Summons three blue eyes white dragons from your deck. Not your hand, not your graveyard, your deck. It's at least up to three, so if you had one in your hand that just got banished, you could at least get two. But obviously, if you're losing all of that advantage on the field and in your hand, and then losing any graveyard setup you have, which is actually important for Blue Eyes decks, they have graveyard recursion, they like things in their grave. You lost all that for three beaters that you they were garnets in your deck, which flies in the face of Blue Eyes because they search Blue Eyes White Dragon with like six cards in their deck. But somehow, you have not done that. You have not played Melody, or resolved one of your stones, or anything other than playing this card. <laughs> Screw alternate white dragon. That's a bad summon. Banish his ass for three beers. And then for the rest of the turn, you can't normal special summon anything else other than blue eyes white dragon. Blue, blue eyes, not a blue eyes monster. Blue eyes white dragon. This card is stupid. Obviously, it's it's there to like set up a game state. Like, did you just summon a bunch of monsters in one turn? You all can make a bunch of meme, a bridge series laughs, ha ha ha. But it's going to lose you the duel if you if you don't OTK your opponent after resolving this card. You have severely lost because you have you have literally nothing except three beaters that can't do anything with. You can't even exceed with them this turn. You can't even make ultimate white dragon with them, which would be like the point. The only reason you'd want all three of those stupid idiots on your board. You can't even do that. With yeah! All right, let's go to the next card. <laughs> the next card is Boycotton. Now, I don't hate Boycotton. Boycotton just came out 15 years too late. Boycotton is a level four plant earth for some reason. I get that it's cotton, so plant, but it depicts a sheep, a sheep. So it's not really cotton, it's wool, and it should be a beast. 
but whatever. You take any battle damage your opponent would have taken by battle from this card. So if you attack their life points directly or they crashed into it uh, and lost some life points, you take that instead. It has 2,500 defense, which is super high for a level four. So that's obviously why it has that stipulation, but okay, cool, it's a wall. Uh, except for the fact that if your opponent took battle damage from this card's battle, this turn, it is then returned to your hand. Not at the end of the battle phase, so it can sit there and soak up a few attacks or whatever and, and waste time and be a wall. Nope, it's as soon as that happens. Whoop. If you had skill drain, I guess it would be fine, but this is totally dumb. It flies in the face of exactly what the card's supposed to do. I'm perfectly fine with my opponent not taking battle damage from crashing into this thing that was like face down in defense position. It's supposed to be a bad but huge wall. You know what, this This is like, this is so dumb. It's like, you know, I'm gonna attack into your wall and you're gonna pay for it. Boycotting? And it's like a sheep, like sheeple? This thing's not a political reference, is it? There's no way. There's no way that they're this clever. That's like five memes deep. Number two is Transfamiliar. Remember when Lynx came out and we all thought it was the end of the world and that we're gonna be so concerned about moving our monsters around because oh no, our Link arrows have to point at the right stuff. And then we learned that if you just don't misplay like a scrub and just put your Link monsters where they're supposed to go to begin with, you don't ever have to worry about moving them around. Spiral didn't have to worry about extra linking you and Goki didn't have to worry about extra linking you and moving their crap around. No, they just didn't misplay like an idiot and <laughs> pooped on the board. So moving your guys is dumb. So why does this exist? Transfamiliar is a level one dark psychic monster with what, like 300 some stupid? Zero, zero attack. Once per turn, you can target one monster you control and you can move it to another unoccupied uh, main monster zone. Oh, Senate Switch, eat your heart out. This one's a body. This thing was a tuner, maybe. It would have some cute use in blue eyes, I guess. It's an e-telly target. It's dark, zero, zero, it's searchable, I guess. But now you're using it to target something, not to like actually care about what it's doing. In this case, moving a monster. It's a benign targeting effect. If this thing moved your opponent's monsters, then yeah, it might actually be okay. No one would play it, but at least it would be okay because you could like move your opponent's like extra links around or whatever and like screw up their like extra link. That'd be cool. Like, oh, if like all their extra link guys were targetable but not destroyable and you just like shuffled one out and it broke the link chain, you're like, aha, bleh! and then we have weird rulings where like they gotta like take one guy out of an extra zone or something. I don't know, that'd be cool. That'd be a cool way of breaking a board. But, but no, having interesting game mechanics is bad. Uh, we should have boring, terrible game mechanics that no one will ever use. Yes, move your own stuff. Shuffle it around like a jerk. And if you don't want to have Transfamiliar be the card for number two, there's a bunch that came out in, in this year. Like, like Nightmare's got a field spell that does it. Because like Nightmares definitely need to move. It's not like they have two monsters like this, which is perfect. <laughs> and even had one that was like this. Why would you ever need to move them? But whatever. <laughs> it's so stupid. And we do actually have an honorable mention because, like I said, there was a lot of bad cards this year. And that honorable mention is, oops, oops, is a normal trap card that reads, target one card you control, <laughs> semicolon, destroy it. Oh, I can go naked too in a slow trap card. Yes. Why is this not on the list? It's awful. But there are some monsters and other things in this game that when they are killed, but specifically destroyed, they do things. So you may want to self-destruct one of your own guys with this trap card. It doesn't do anything after the destruction. It's literally destroy it, period. So things may or may not miss timing afterwards. So that's a plus, like you could blow up your dupe frog and that's good. Oh, it's even a trap card. So you could chain a paleo to it and then destroy your dupe frog and your dupe frog will <laughs> miss timing. <laughs> it's terrible. But yeah, you could, you, there is a perceived function of it. It's just bad and you wouldn't do it, but it's bad and it's bad, but it exists, which is a lot more to be said than a lot of the ones on the list. So it's an honorable mention. Grunix, you can blow up your Grunix. And before we get to number one, as always, it is sponsor time, and our sponsor is MetaMath. Would you believe I had a really cool, like, exclusive, like, test print of a Dark Magician girl mat, and I forgot it at my house? 
up in Rochester, otherwise I'd show you guys. But whatever, if you guys want to see Metamats make Ducky Makuta body pillows, leave that comment down below. I'm trying to goad him into doing it. I'm like, come on, Dave, do it. Make body pillows. <laughs> It'll be funny. <laughs> Help me out, guys. But anyway, let's get to number one. Number one is Scramble Egg. Could it have been anything else? Scramble Egg is a normal trap card that reads, If a monster you control is destroyed by a battle or a card effect and sent to the graveyard, special summon one Sonic Chick from your hand, deck, or graveyard. It's not once per turn. Now, you might say, okay, it's a trap card, Dave. It's slow. And its activation condition is specific. One of your guys needs to get destroyed and sent to the graveyard. Those go in hand in hand most of the time, but still, specific activation condition. Okay, it's certainly not a great card, but why is it so bad? Well, number one, Sonic Chick is stupid. What does it do? It can't be killed by monsters with like 1,900 or more attack. It's a level one wing beast from the Synchro era, one of Yusei's cards, and somehow it's not a tuner. Why isn't it a tuner? It's level one and it's in Yusei's deck. It should be a tuner. If it was a tuner, then Scramble Egg would actually be all right. I mean, you don't care about Sonic Chick for what it does, just for what it is, but at least it's a tuner, right? And it's one from the deck. Woot. No, it, it's just a, got a crappy battle immunity, but all right. Fine, it's a free body. It's a level one, you can make Link Karibo with it. Link Karibo with it, which is funny because Link Karibo's probably got a better battle immunity. <laughs> no, what really, really makes Scramble Egg go over the edge is the context in which it came out. When, like I said before, when uh, Links were first announced, we all thought it was the end of the world. They were gonna destroy our Yugi Mans. We we're gonna have to play with weird columns. It's all gonna be annoying. We're gonna have to move our stuff around. It's gonna be really slow. Ugh. Turns out, like, none of that's true, but whatever. And then they were like, Don't worry, child, for this is the Link Vrains pack. All your favorite decks will have unique Link monsters with broken effects, like Chirabini and Needle Fiber. And you do not have to worry about your scrub tier deck getting completely gate kept out of the game by not having a blue monster, because they all have a blue monster. And then we're like, wow, are we going to get this in an own, their own pack? Are we going to get the Link Frames pack too? And Konami's like, no, child, no. We will just put them in the export slots of main sets. They'll be even decently okay to pull. And you'll, we're like, yeah! And then like the first one we get was like, all of the slots were Link Frames monsters, except one for some reason. It was Scramble Egg. I, I don't know why. Apparently, this was an import. We hadn't had it in years. I didn't even know that it existed but we just had to have it, as opposed to like Jasmine or Link Karibo or Cherubini, Link Karibo, not Link Karibo, uh, Needle Fiber, you know what I mean. All these really good, impactful Link 2 monsters we could have had, or some of the ones we eventually got, like the Extra Hero and things like, nope, uh, no, scrambled, scrambled egg. Why wasn't this like pack filler in like an OTS pack or a, one of those extra packs we get like between mains, like anything else, stupid card. But anyway, guys, that is the list. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I hated it, because these... <laughs> I don't even play half these decks, and so these are frustrating. But in the comments below what you guys think, and remember, guys, if you want a Meta Matt's body pillow, let me know in the comments below. And remember, guys, if you control the meta, Will, I will see you guys next time. Wacha! Well, looks like they made it through the video, but you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.